Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Welsh Premiership podcast, sponsored by My Club Cushions. I'm your host, Adam Cleary, and today we're joined by a very special guest, Fijian international, Nico Matualu. Nico, thanks for coming on. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Thank, uh, thank you. Thanks for inviting me to this uh, event. Yeah. Uh, no worries. So welcome to Wales and welcome to the Welsh Premiership. How are you finding it so far? Um, yeah, it's like really, really good. Um, uh, love, love the, love the, the boys, uh, the coaches, and uh, it's been uh, uh, two weeks now training with them, and uh, I feel very, yeah, comfortable in uh, in the club. Yeah, I'm for everyone that doesn't know. Can you just explain a bit of how the move to Pontypridd come about? Okay, so off-season, uh, I came back from uh, Montauban. I was in, um, in France and um, I spent two, two, uh, one season there and then I came over uh, because the missus and the, my two boys lives in Kafili. So I was like decided maybe I'll try to do some um, some studies, and so I can live around them while playing rugby. And I told my missus, and my missus was like, "What? To live professional? Uh, I don't think so. You're gonna be like really, really just like sweets." Off all of a sudden from professional to come over, and I was like, yeah, I, I, I will have a think about it. And it takes me a while to, to process all, all of it. So, come back from Montauban, I was at home and I was doing lots of things uh, online, uh, and then I give a message. Um, you know, like a uni buddies. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So I give a message to the lecturer, uh, Mr. Dean, in South of Wales uh, University. And after one month, he replied. So I was get ready to go back to France. And when he replied, and my agent was like, you have to go to racing uh, now. And I was like, oh, my passport's still not here. Uh, I, can't, I can't go, I don't have anything. <laughs> and then he replied, he said, okay, come on, come along. We have a talk. So we talk and it's finally, uh, he said, okay, don't worry. All I have to do, apply. And then he gave a call to uh, Justin, the coach in Ponte. So I went over to the next day, met him, go around the, the club. And I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then I came over and then the agent was like, no, you have to go to France. So I went over, I told him after three weeks in there of the tournament, seven. So I joined the racing. And then my agent say, oh, they give you two more weeks to train and they're gonna send you later. Uh, like that's from the, you know, all the talks yeah. and with them too. And I was like, no, I already set up the, like some of the stuff in there. And yeah, and now everything is history now. <laughs> I had my, my first game uh, last week. Yeah, and obviously you made your debut on the weekend. How do you feel it went? Um, I think like first first game with them, uh, lots of things uh, bounce off good boys, and they like really like young and solid boys. So I really happy for that. Like through the season, now it's good. We see what. Um, uh, the weakness of us and then throughout. But personally, for me, 
Um, no, I only say I treat like every game. This is like a little bit um, uh, different to what I used to like play, like professionally. But now in here, like I'm just trying to get involved with the boys, know the boys well. And uh, yeah, last week was, unfortunately we, we lost the game. Uh, we were dominate like few areas. The forwards was like really good. And um, only our discipline um, make us uh, go down after the 80 minutes. Yeah, and like you said, you've dropped down from the professional level to, to play this semi pro level. What do you think the standard of the premiership's like compared to obviously where you've played before? Oh, like really, it's rugby. Yeah. Um, like before, the difference is professional. You train on Monday, you train on Tuesday, day off on Wednesday, Thursday, get back in, you know, you gym together, um, you have uh, Saturday games, and after that, you go out with friends, have some beers. Um, it's, it's different in that way, like in here, it's train together on Tuesday, Thursday, and then game on Saturday, but because lots of the boys working. So for me to, to, to join and to feel, uh, I feel much better. It's like a relief, <laughs> you know, like I thought, I thought I'm going to be like tense, like dropping down, but I think I feel great. And I feel like, Free, look like the missus and my two boys like every day and they have to come and watch me play every Saturday that's the best thing yeah so tell us about uh, playing rugby as a youngster in Fiji and how important is rugby to Fijian culture once you brought up in a family or in a group for example, I grew up in the seven um, siblings. My dad had seven uh, children, including me. So, and we have lots of cousins. Fijian loves extended family, you know. And once you get out from your mom, once you're birth, once you started work, like rugby is like the first thing you know mind throwing I used to remember when there's no ball we used to do like the the papers like fold the papers sellotape it sellotape it in like a ball and then we use it if not we use the empty uh, bottle <laughs> to kick her out and if it's like really not we use the coconut like the, the coconut, like the small coconut, we use that as a bond. But for me, growing up in Fiji, uh, I was I was blessed, and I was uh, because my dad like really uh, pushed me when he saw maybe a talent, a little bit talent for me. So he pushed me, like he's like the one I. You wake up early in the morning, you need to do, and I was like, no, I still like need bed. No, you have to do run. And I think it's very helpful to for me once I grow up, because we woke up uh, early in the morning, like around half five, six. We go down to the river, shower, like have bath in the river, and then come back up breakfast. And we have to walk like four kilometers to school and then come back. I think it's like all um, like connecting in every, like for example, me, like how I build it up for like um, 
uh, rugby player and um, grew up the under 14, like a uh, district school, and then 13 and 14. And then I moved to, because my dad was a pastor back then. So he moved places to places. So I was under 16 in uh, Nandronga, Singatoka, where like the best team of rugby in Fiji. And uh, I moved over to Suva Grammar uh, in, F in Fiji. And that's, I think that's where my uh, rugby developed. Like, oh man, I'm going for it. And then I joined the, the Fiji Navy. And I was there, been playing rugby. And uh, from there, I was selected to the sevens uh, team. I have a couple of um, season with them, like uh, IRB. Uh, that was the last time Edinburgh Seven was, and then they changed it to Glasgow Seven. So Edinburgh was back then, um, and then started playing Sevens, and they were like the coach, okay. Uh, you're going to go to the under 20 for Fiji, held in Japan. When they come back, then I thought that's the end. And then choose the seven. And then I got my debut 2009 in Fiji against Japan. And yeah, that was. Um, the best moment, uh, like, you know, young youngster for Fiji to play where the Jesse, it's like really your, your dream come true if you wear the Jesse. And then 2012, I play, uh, Fiji play against uh, Scotland. And uh, I think that's where the door opens for me. And then straight after that game, I flew over to, to, to Glasgow. And uh, yeah, I think you, you heard this story before. So I flew up to Glasgow with my flip flops, <laughs> my Sulu and my bullet set, right? I flew over, arrived, and it was like freezing. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I was like, oh God, where am I now, where am I? <laughs> but, well, like, um, before my dad passed away, only three things he told me, if you go to another, if you have a contract, you go to another place, or like generally, first you have to listen and to like the environment. You know, second, you need to learn the traditional traditions so well, language, everything. And you need to respect every people. And then if you get that tree, you're not gonna miss home. So I think I wasn't like really miss home when I, because I was like young when I uh, arrived in, in, uh, in Glasgow. All right, and uh, play 42, 41, 41 caps for Fiji. And um, yeah, and me here in the Wales, you have thought that. And obviously, like you said, you spent a lot of your career away from home. How special was it for you when you do go home to, to see oh. people and play for Fiji? Oh, yeah. Bro, it's so every every off season, I just like looking forward to go. Yeah, so I go. It's like see my mom, all my nieces, all my my nephews, all my brothers and sisters and friends. It's like big thing to me too. So. Just go like a couple of weeks or 
like a month because we have like a PNC back in Fiji. So I'm not like to see them like going straight home to see that. I went over, if I go to Fiji, we have camps, straight to camps and then camps. And then I just like find time. I always tell them, come over to the, to the hotel to, you know, uh, or take them for dinner or every Sunday I go to some Sunday I go to the village <clears throat> and uh, have like dinner and lotu like a church uh, service um, yeah it's like really I think it's really important mm. uh, to to know where you, you like where you started and like because because now I see, like, well, I think I live too much in UK, <laughs> and I think like something like the respect and um, the way how you give back to your family that's like a very important thing. Like um, we always like ignore this, like they bring us in our their family like for nine months and you like innocent cry every night. I always think about that. Or every night, even though they want to sleep, you cry, they change your diapers, this and that. And sometimes like everyone needs to like realize how hard they brought you up. So in order where you act, you still need to look even like, sending a flower to your mom or say good morning, you know, like, because in Fiji, we have those type of thing that, you know, like appreciate everything that brought you in there. Like, don't ever forget who brought you to be who you are now. So I think that's like really, like really, really important, like for the, um, I always tell my son, even though they were like five and four, I always show them if they waste food, for example, if they waste food or milk, just drink milk, I always like Google, search the people from Africa that like don't have, they need food. You want to be like this, otherwise I'm gonna take you to Africa, you live in Africa. <laughs> And I will bring those kids in here to live here. And now, like, those type of things, I think is changing my kids too to realize, oh, yeah, uh, we need to <laughs> finish our food. If you want this, you need to finish it because mm. lots of people, like, need lots of things. That's just, like, for me, when I go to Fiji, I, like, happy to see them, you know? Like, and now the last time I've been in Fiji was 2019 after the World Cup. And that's how long, 2019, oh, three years? Three years, yeah. 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 So now we're back and then we just like calling. Uh, my mom just called video call or just call, give me a message and all my family now, yeah. Obviously playing for Fiji, you've played against Wales quite a few times. What's it been like playing against Wales? Um, like before Wales, because I've been playing uh, for Glasgow and I know lots of the guys that play for Wales because they, Glasgow play Cardiff, Ospreys and Dragons. So for, I always like think, uh, and scarlets because Ireland or uh, some always dominate on the that was pro 12. Yeah. And then we become like Wales, all these same players. Like it's unbelievable, like for Wales. And I like against Wales, I always say, like, look. Um, Wales is a different team once they like play for their country like they proud to play their country like for uh, like like Fiji because Fiji and Wales always go for like 
physical um like this aggressive like tackles you know you, you know all but it's like for me to play against Wales it's like um I, it, it's like really good because my my two boys they have Wales too so I always like hey who are you no, I'm, I'm going to support daddy. I'm going to support daddy. It's like um, they both like wear like Fiji, Fiji jersey in every like a match. And um, yeah, like through the World Cup too, we always like play ways. And it's like, a, um, I think it's just one time that we beat Wales was 2007 when Fiji beat Wales. And that was unbelievable. Those um, those memory was still like passed down to us once we come along. It's like Wales and Fiji. It's like like a traditional also, like whatever or what I can say. It's um, only the best best win always win in after the eighty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like it's all like different, different feeling to play against Wales. To be fair, for all the countries that I play against, I think Wales is different. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously going back to Glasgow, you had a couple of spells there, become a club legend there as well, I and mean, you won the league in your last season in your first spell. Just how much did you love it then? Right. It's, um, I'll say the first time I came in, I didn't even understand what Al Kalek, like that was our captain back then. I can't even understand what he was saying. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? <laughs> oh, man. Someone needs to like tell me. Um, and I was so fresh too. When I come from Fiji, and it's my like first ever club ever in the professional, and um, I didn't even go to New Zealand or Australia, yeah, and then come over straight from the farm, brother, straight from the farm, <laughs> and come over. And it's and I tried. That's why I'm gonna go back. My dad told me try to understand them, and it's gonna be like really good. The weather, everything. Uh, first day of training was so good and um, we're doing the captain's run. I will say the, like a story. We're doing the captain's run and first time in history for me to see the snow and it was starting, just starting snowing. And we have a uh, line out and I was playing, um, playing nine and um, they were like, where's Nico? I was collecting snow. I see, I'm outside of the pitch. <laughs> and they were like, hey, come back. Yeah, anyway, and it's like we we bonded like 2012, 13, and 14. We really like bond together. And it, it, it's important. The gratitude was like good um, mental coach, like for me. Like he put like a tradition, like for the team, like the base of the team. And that's where you need to work like from there. And then he, you go to like a family, fans, everyone you play for. And uh, 2015, it was the unbelievable year. Like it just unreal. Um, we play again, like on the semi in Glasgow. Yeah, that was home game. We play there against Munster, <clears throat> and uh, oh, and uh, I did like a penalty. If they kick that to to the post, they would win. They would won by that time. And then it was advantage to them. And then the prop came over and like shuffled me around. And then I 
fall down like <laughs> like soccer play and then <laughs> and then the referee we reverse the penalty <laughs> to us and then we kick it out and we score conversing boom we win the game finished <laughs> and then when we went to against uh Al- no against Alstar that was Alstar and then we play Munster at the final at Alstar ground in Kingston and and they were like booing me yeah <laughs> oh that's the best feeling ever they were booing me <laughs> Nico boo I was like oh I love these fans yeah and um like the fans too in Glasgow are um, like very very welcoming and like give me like lots of uh for me to like put it more on like training on 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 the pitch like like small thing like that collecting together and then you can perform so yeah it was and some very good friend uh, of me like Ryan Wilson like help me to go you know go over and over uh, and 2015 we won like people just say oh they won but they people I will say this like people just see your good things but they didn't even see how you were there you know mm. so it's important always go back to who was around you on that time when you in the top because only those people who like support you because once you get there like people you don't even know they will like oh, you know <laughs> it's not bad but you just know your limit and you know um yeah i think it's <laughs> and after you left Glasgow for the first time you had a spell in England how was that how did you enjoy the English league oh that's a uh, very <laughs> yeah, it's good meet a lot of friend, uh, friends uh, different type of games uh, details um and it's different um the coaches and the management little a bit uh higher than like glasgow i'm not saying like glasgow but now glasgow is getting better like through um uh the ground thing like gym you know those yeah. type of things in in bar was amazing like we have three meals a day breakfast lunch and you have dinner again before you go home like who don't want that <laughs> and the <laughs> and the rugby wise i really because i have few games and then i got injured my first injured ever for rugby that's you it was my pcl and i out for nine months and then back then the first year to go to my second year and then i was like i think i was like hearing you know the coaches and tom hader was like coming over to coach and i, I didn't even knew him that well So I was telling my agent you need to take me somewhere else and I was spend uh, uh, a few months in uh, in Exeter I went to San Exeter and then back to Glasgow uh, mm-hmm. premiership but yeah like it's different from um like I say it's different from Glasgow like pro 14 that time pro 12 uh just you know structure forwards yeah. i think like nowadays they trying to do that 
I think players feel like coaches need to know the players so well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, they they should know like their strength like so well how they can do and then put the game plan on top of that. You know what I mean? Or just put the game plan like this and didn't even shoot the players. I think that's one of the thing I didn't even like maybe enjoy in the premiership. Mm. I enjoy yeah. exit other with the friends and uh, bath with um, outside rugby. Mm. Meet a lot of uh, family there. Yeah, and most recently you had that season out in France with Montauban. What was it like there? It's a little bit because it's like top 14, you have a top 14 and you have Pro D2. It's like Pro D2, like, it's like we do meetings, you come over and you have 12 to 2, you have a free time for you. 12 to 2 every day, every day. So in the recovery sorts of things, I like do, they, they're professional too, but layout bed. I'll tell you a story. So we have a meeting at two o'clock, right? So before two, I was there, like two, uh, no, quarter to two, I was there. There's no one, was there. And then everyone was like entering like the door, like four minutes, five minutes fast. And I was like, <laughs> okay, this is must be chill, so chill. And then they, it's like their thing, like so chill, come over, relax, and then the coach come over and then start. So that, that thing too. It was good too, good experience then in France. Um, the first few weeks I was like, didn't even do anything on the lockdown, like zero, no running, just gym. And then I told the coach, can you play me on the wing first before you put me in nine? Like, so I can get, no, straight to nine, bang. I was like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was good. Um, I think I was like, uh, try top transfer in, in there, in the, in the club. It was, it was good, like feeling to meet uh, other players. And the the game wise too was 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 good, like good experience in uh, in fact in uh, in Montauban. Mm. And now looking at Ponty this season, what do you hope to achieve with the club? Uh, the first thing uh, I was trying to do is uh, now I understand the coach. I, I know the coaches like. Uh, little but I want to like uh, get well with them and the players and uh, second like he he always asked me what do you think of the coach he always said what do you think about this and I was like like the first week the second week I just want to get quickly know them so quickly and get into the system on the game plan and uh, try to involve more to, to what the coach is trying to say. Uh, for example, yesterday, he just gave me a message. Can you do like a kick reset and the reloading on the south side to do the skill set of that? And then I was like, yeah, no worries. I do it. So on the game, I was getting involved too with the senior team to get the coaches aligned uh, with that. Uh, and um, from the, like for me, I, I I feel like a stage where I understand myself, where when I know the players so well and so like understand their game. They what type of game, what do you do? I think 
that's the best ear when you understand one another. And the second thing we all want to achieve is to uh, win every game. Uh, unfortunately, like the game last week wasn't going our way. So it's good there's a game coming up and um, we'll, we'll try to win every game. And uh, hopefully we will be on the playoffs. And uh, if that goes well, uh, no doubt, because I feel like the bunch of coaches and the bunch of boys right now in Ponte, I'll ask myself why if you didn't um, uh, like achieve all win every game. But hopefully end of the season, we hopefully, uh, I know we are got to like working so hard for that, but hopefully we will win some silverware this season. Yeah, and just to finish off, Nico, who's some of the best players that you've played with alongside in your career? Play against or alongside? Both. So we've played alongside Both. and some of your best opposition. Okay. So some of the best I play with. First, um, in the pitch, uh, I'll name starting William Ryder, uh, Sean Maitland, um, Josh Strauss, Ryan Wilson, uh, Josh Tisova, uh, Ren Randra. Oh, I can name lots of like. <laughs> uh, who else? Ford, JJ, Jonathan Joseph, Watson. Uh, who else? Okay, opposition. I I love uh, like we used to like text texting together like on on social media in and out and on the game. It's like we hate each other. Just after the rugby, we like really we were, like best uh, best mate. Uh, Silly Williams, Silly Williams. Yeah, like on the pitch. I remember. When we came over, we just tried to hit each other. Like if you pass the ball, he still hits you, and that's like I really like like him on the pitch. But the worst and dirty, it's him. Uh, who else? Um, oh, who's the? Oh, oh, this is so bad. The seven. Uh, Navindi, Navindi, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, him, him too. Uh, to play against him, pain. Uh, <laughs> uh, and oh, he will be so sad now because I didn't even know his name. He's gonna the he's seven two. He just played Cardiff against uh -huh. Ponty. He used to play for Cardiff. Ollie Robinson. Ollie Robinson. Robinson. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> uh, Robinson. Oh, he's one of the rugged players I ever played against. Uh, yeah, some some legend. And like, to be fair, rugby, you know, in the pitch, you try to kill each other. And the best thing after that, you friend for life. That's the best thing I love about rugby. Uh, that's brilliant, Nico. Thank you for joining us. Some brilliant stories in there. And I'm sure we'll see you uh, sometime this season. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.